Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I had to take a peek, make sure I look all right. <laughs> I peeked into the, the view viewfinder there. What I'm going to talk about today is there was a lot of comments about the chickens and the um, bearded lady and Mr. Brown. And I had a question about what, why the, where the, why were the other chickens picking on the bearded lady? Well, whenever there is an injured chicken or a weak chicken, they like to get them out of the flock. And so what they'll do is they'll beat on them until they die. And once they're dead, sometimes they'll even peck at them and eat some of them, or sometimes they'll just move away and leave them alone now that they're dead but they want to get rid of the weakest link in their flock. And because she hurt her toe, broke her toe, she couldn't get up and move away. So they recognize that she is something wrong with her, so they want to get rid of her. And fortunately, I went in there before they actually got pecking, because their beaks are like sledgehammers on the head of a chicken. It'd be like somebody taking a hammer or a claw hammer and just pecking away at you and first thing you know your skull would be starting to break and you would start to bleed and you would be you would be in real trouble well I got there before that happened so she has no outside injury from their brutal attack but she does have the broken toe and somebody else mentioned that maybe Mr. Brown could be company for her well in the people world, that would probably be passable, but in the chicken world, it's a whole different ball game. She prefers to be just left to herself. Mr. Brown, when I let him down, <laughs> that's like the teeter-totter <laughs> thing. Mr. Brown, let me down. Well, when I let Mr. Brown down and walk around in the room, he doesn't even go near the other spot where the other chicken is. He just kind of minds his own business and he does his own little thing. He just likes to follow me. He has been, a, he's attached basically to me. But he he doesn't see her as a, a playmate or company or companion of any kind and she doesn't see him as that either. And when I go to pet her, she still kind of tries to scooch away so she's really not you know, um adjusted to human touch yet she still is afraid of me but let's hope that changes as time goes by i also had in my comments jane had asked what are the little blessings well the little blessings are a doll that karina anna is showing us how to make and karina anna you'll be real proud of me i did put her back together this is as far as karina anna has gotten She's shown us how to do the head and how to put the, the shorts on. She's going to show us how to do the legs and the arms and the hair, and then we'll be putting a face on, and then we'll be making a dress for this little blessing. And the little blessings was a series of dolls that she had made. And I'll just put it there. Karina, Anna, I'm taking a picture. <laughs> and, um... It's a series of dolls that she has made, and she used to sell them, and she made one for each of her children, and they all have the name of their child, and then there's a little verse, I think, on the cards. Her daughter was coloring the pictures that was on the cards. Then eventually she started to have them professionally made because it got to be a bit much for the daughter to be making these little cards that was connecting to the little blessing dolls. She also made... um little blessing bears and she's going to write the patterns or have the pattern on her Etsy shop so if you want the pattern to this she will have that available to where you could purchase the pattern and make it or you can go to her video and watch and follow along she does it in real time because she doesn't know how to edit yet so you get it as she's doing it and so my first one I wasn't happy with, so I watched her again today and did it again, and this time I'm happy with it. This time it's correct. It's even got the right number of, of um, stitches around here. She had 17 on the legs 
and I have 17 on the legs. And I did stuff the legs. I don't think she stuffed them yet, but I did stuff them just because I wanted to. And I figure we're going to have to be stuffing them pretty soon anyways. Um, I Probably from the bottom of the, ex the actual leg. These are, these are the underwear. And so I'm going to ma be making a blue dress for mine, as you can tell. And if you didn't know, that's what I'm going to be making. Also, uh, people did not realize that chickens eat meat, bugs, vegetables, fruits. They'll eat anything. They'll, they'll, you, you throw it outside, they'll eat it. They'll eat eggs. So what I do with the eggs is I, I grind my eggshells because I want them to get the eggshells. The eggshells are calcium for them and helps them have better eggs themselves so it gives them the calcium that they need. I do buy, what do you call it, um, um, the oyster. oyster. I do the shells. oyster shells. I do buy them, but I don't give that to them very often. I will save the egg shells and grind them up and give that to them. I also have grit. They have to have grit. The man in the in the store, the farm store, was complaining about his ducks having full crop crops, mm -hmm. as they're called. And I said, are you giving them grit? And he says, no. And I says, they, that that will make them sick if they don't have the grit because they, they don't have any teeth. That's how they grind their food. That grit grinds it up and that's how it gets into their, gives um, nutrition to their body. So they need the grit. But yes, chickens will eat everything. They Very much can. an omnivore. Yes. The only thing I don't give my chickens is I don't give them raw potato peels, although other people have, but mine don't like them. They'll like them if they're cooked, and I'm not sure if they're supposed to have them raw. Some things are, are toxic to the animals, and I don't give them raw onions either because I think those are toxic. I'm not sure, but they can eat cooked onions. Anything that is cooked, they can eat, so I will give them that. And um, Granny Bee... Your spaghetti squash is doing so good. The other day I cooked one. i got to cook more. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of them. But I was real surprised. At one time I wasn't sure I liked spaghetti squash. Well, now my taste buds must have changed because I really like spaghetti squash. And to me it tasted like the butternut squash or the Which acorn one? squash is what it tasted like. So I just put a little butter on it. And I ate it like that. Some people will put spaghetti sauce on it to make it like spaghetti, but I, to me that would I would not want it because I am a real pasta connoisseur, <laughs> and to me that would be like um, no, I wouldn't want it. So, well, that is my video for today. I am getting very warm just talking because I think uh, you know it's it's. When I when I get going and I start to feel a little nervous, I get warm. So I'm beginning to feel the nerves kick in. So I better say goodbye, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. So bye-bye.